Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and your assignment today. And we're going to be talking about a new moon in Gemini, and this is happening for the 13th of June 2018. So as always, I hope that you're always um, well and um, <clears throat> that today's energy has been, in a sense, prosperous <laughs> is the word I would want to use for that. Okay, cool. So what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about in terms of this energy? What are we going to talk about in terms of how to take this energy and really embody it in a way that transforms your life? And I think I want to start off with talking a little bit about the Gemini archetype itself, okay? Gemini is the energy that allows us to know how we can communicate is one of them, okay? So communication is an essential part of how life operates with other forms of life, okay? Or <clears throat> if we had to put it like this, for instance, if we take a network of um, sort of veins, right? Part of their process is transporting uh, blood from one point of the body to the other, and that supports a specific function within the body, keeping the body cooled, for instance, right? <clears throat> Amongst other things, oxygen, so the brain can exist. Gemini is that function that says everything is interconnected and the interconnectedness is through how things communicate with each other. And so in human form, what we have is random objects, because everything is a complete random object in my opinion, <laughs> Gemini, and then the word that we give it allows us to create a definition, right? And then that definition that we have around it then allows us to connect with a deeper essence of what it could be or mean for us, right? <clears throat> so the natural square between Gemini and Pisces in the zodiac reflects to us this um, experience or this this essence that <clears throat> when we look at something in the phenomena of reality and we see it for what it is the moment that we name it we separate from its from its origin okay so a table is a table because we define it that way but in the essence it's really just a sort of construction of wood if it's a wooden table and certain, um, let, let's take a, a, a table like this one, for instance, that's wooden, but then it's got some uh, metal uh, legs and stuff. And so it's metal and wood placed together and they're connected. And then in this formation, we've got this desk that we interact with with multiple ways. For instance, all of the recording equipment in front of me, <clears throat> right? So Gemini is that ability to go, okay, this is a desk. Um, it's made out of wood and it has these sort of metal uh, legs that allow it to remain stable. And so we've labeled these things, but in essence, they are not the table. It is only when we form it to something and then give it a name, do we really have something relatable, right? Gemini in itself, as it connects to the Pisces, i.e. Gemini squaring Pisces, is where Pisces is the unnamed, and Gemini is the name. So with everything in existence, it is not defined until we define it through our language or we define it through our um, relatability to what that object might mean for us, okay? <clears throat> Another way to see Gemini and coming back to the more natural ecosystem of things in nature is this process of how bees operate. I love this analogy. I actually talk a lot about this when I teach the um, foundation course astrology, which reminds me, I need to let you all know of this um, four part webinar series that I'm hosting that's teaching the basics of um, evolutionary astrology. I made a note on, on the community a couple of days ago to see if anybody was interested. So <clears throat> I'll talk to you about that a bit later. But when I talk about Gemini and I teach about Gemini, think of it as the bees and think of the process of how a bee is not efficient when it stays in one place gathering pollen 
but actually moves from place to place gathering um, pollen from all over the place, right? The process of the bee moving from place to place is the Gemini archetype that you will so easily read in um, classic astrology books. And it'll talk about diversity. And if you know you've got a Gemini moon like me, for instance, which is the truth, we can be slightly sort of um, on the surface in the way that we express ourselves. We, we, you know, our mind requires us to look at multiple things. You know, we tend to be overstimulated by many different perspectives and stuff. And those are true. And even the way I communicate, you can feel that Gemini-ness uh, in my expression, not only in the way that I construct language together and articulate the stars, but also in the sense that um, my language is not like a Taurus moon, for instance, or a Mercury and Mercury and Taurus, where it's very slow and you understand my point. I'm very talking with my hands. So Gemini is that fast paced movement that allows us to observe multiple things because it's about gathering, right? Gemini is gathering information. What's your opinion? What is your perspective on that? And so this is why the Gemini archetype likes to communicate because communication is an exchange of ideas, an exchange of perception. And it's not going to hold its attention for more than 15 minutes because if it were to, it would be falling into the category of the Scorpio archetype, which is about very laser uh, focused in experience. And it's, it's funny because I have a Gemini moon and my partner has a Gemini uh, moon in Scorpio. And so our self-identities, the nature of what our souls are trying to do regarding our personal sense of self, those two, they're not, in, they're, combat, they're not uh, compatible, you know? So my Gemini is like, there isn't anything more than just what's on the surface. And the Scorpio moon says, yes, but we must drill down to the bottom and figure it out. And it's like, but there isn't anything to figure out because there's nothing there. Um, and sometimes that's correct. And sometimes there is more and the Gemini has to go down into the, into the basement to discover that stuff. So you get the essence of Gemini. Yeah? <clears throat> and for any of you that have obviously had your birthdays in Gemini, uh, happy birthday. So what does it got to do with the new moon in Gemini? Well, think about the context of where we are in this, this evolutionary process of we had an, uh, a full moon in uh, Sag, and the if you have a look at the charter that I've got it over here, you see we had a full moon in Sagittarius. So the moon was sitting here, and the sun was there, and Neptune, which is not showing right now, but it is because of the ten degree orb, is squaring the sun and moon are squaring Neptune. And in the full moon that we had just before, the the moon was sitting there and is squaring Neptune. So. The first thing that I identified was the square to Neptune that both luminaries had, right? The sun, our creative purpose, our life force, the essence of what we are here to see so that when we see that it transforms ourself, that brings us into a deep alignment. The moon, which is this, the essence of reflection based on emotional interaction. And they're squaring the archetype of Neptune, which is a transpersonal planet. And you've heard me talk about this before. When we talk about transpersonal planets, we're talking about something that is existing beyond our sense of human perception, right? It's, it's experiences that bleed through into our conscious awareness that through the experience invites us to contemplate life in a non-physical way. So, when you have this luminary of sun and moon contacting a Neptunian planet, you know that there's something around the self-identity that is decaying and the sense of self, which is the, the, moon, the, the sun here, how that meaning or purpose is decaying. And again, why do I talk about decay? Because Neptune is the archetype that erodes in order for it to disappear. In order for it to be gone, to be reunited with its the, the core of its energy. So we are eroding the essence of the past, Mars conjunct South Node in Aquarius. You'll know in the article that, it, that we had um, written, uh, one of the paragraphs talked about Mars conjunct the South Node as 
an experience where we're reminded of the past. We're almost in a sense of deja vu. And as we interact with that, we feel the timelessness in the experience. We feel the essence of that memory or the essence of that self-identity or the essence of the purpose fading away as it no longer has the value that it once had. <clears throat> so now that the sun and the moon are connecting to Neptune again and the sun and the moon are also making a, a connection to Uranus, uh, sorry, to the south nodes, as you can see there, right? There is an invitation to see that right now in the context of this overall sort of geometry that we are, this geometry of movement, we're moving through a time of changing the way that we respond to the past by recognizing the essence of what it was and comparing it against what you are right now and seeing the change, right? Changing yourself, stepping out into this new self, this new authentic self that is not attached or that is not a part of the past anymore. And it's about identifying that. It's about, it's about communicating that. Gemini is about connecting with it, objectifying it in the sense allowing yourself to breathe fire and and label it label this new sense of self because as you see there venus is going to be moving over onto the north node okay in leo and that's going to happen while this uh this new moon is in progress so you can see here that that as this new moon hits it sets the intention for a communication mercury in uh in cancer now and Venus in Cancer at its end degrees, it sets the intention for the communication of a new identity, a change in values, a change in essence. And that essence is deeply, deeply supported by this ongoing um, sort of Jupiter trining Neptune, where I bet you, when was today's the 13th, right? The 13th of June is when this happened. Go back to the 12th of June or the 11th of June and ask yourself if you were processing a polarity of, inf of, of experiences where you're experiencing deep insight, like you were shifting stuff in yourself that when you saw it from this perspective, it almost, it like, it just changed you. And the healing occurred, alignment occurred. And so the essence here with this comment, with this like expression is that as we change our emotional relationship to the past and we step into it's not even about stepping into we've already been there it's about actually moving in that direction it's about allowing yourself to embody what the last two moons have been about so we had the new moon in taurus which was the radical recreation of yourself and then we have the um full moon in sagittarius and it says just know your simplest gifts now it's about taking that radical sense of self allowing those simplest gifts to be present with you and then going, hey, this is what I do. This is what I am. This is what I, I'm expressing it. I'm communicating it. I'm diversifying it and opening up to the potential and the possibility of each experience being an invitation to, tr to bring your new self to the table and watch how this transformation keeps taking place with Jupiter retrograde and Scorpio, the key to osmosis with a new experience that radically dissolves the past and allows for you to step into a new feeling of empowerment. <clears throat> it's a very important key part of this. Saturn and Jupiter, sorry, Saturn and Pluto have been sort of playing around in Capricorn for a while. Pluto since 2008. These two energies are creating a very, very specific um timeline for us a very specific role for us and the essence of what i want to share with everybody today with this new moon is that it's time to get alive connected communicative about where you are in your time and space not where i am in my time and space not where the world is telling you where you've got to be in that time and space but where you are in your time and space you might be in a different place to me. 
And so where are we each? And allow the Uranus and Taurus to really begin to individuate the value according to where you are in your own personal life. Okay? Allow yourself to get connected with that personal space that is you. Because the essence of our awakening process is taking the duality of seeing the world outside and bringing it to the singularity that sits in the third eye. And when, when it goes from there and it hits there, the vision goes inward. And when that vision is inward, the unfolding of your life becomes the individuation process. That's why we have astrology looking at different cycles to see where the unfolding cycle in your life is occurring. Like for instance, we all know between the ages of 28 and 30, we're going to experience what is called the Saturn return. That is a time frame in your life. That's a phase in your journey in which an unfolding experience of authority must begin to be established. You understand? So where are you in your own time? What is that emotional identity like? And how can you allow yourself to be present with that space in each moment and to see how it cultivates natural sovereignty? It cultivates natural development of boundaries. It supports your ability to identify what are those emotions that you're processing and it also allows you to with all of the things i said interact with life not by life dictating to you but you in a sense allowing life to flow through you so when i talk about dictating i mean more along the lines that we have these certain obligations that we have to live by uh, and these attachments that we have and sometimes our bodies don't want to do that. I mean, we're very outside the realm of what's natural for us. We don't really live in that world completely yet. So we do have to take our time that is ourself because we might wake up on a Monday morning and not feel like we want to go and do the job that we want to do. Or on Wednesday, we might not feel amped up and ready to do what we need to do because where we are here and where the outside time is, is a different place. So how are we connected or disconnected from ourselves? And this is all about with Saturn and Capricorn getting into the process of what is your natural time? What is your natural time? It has a lot to do with time, this energy, this energy right now, the timing of things, the timing of, of how things get put out, as an example. Um, something that I'm really, really excited about, and I, you can see on the bottom of the screen over here, I've been working with Patreon for a while, and I'm really excited to have opened up a tier where I will be posting all of my content on Patreon, right? All of my content goes to Patreon, and there's lots that you can learn there. So I encourage you to actually go to Patreon and check out what I do. And there's a tier that says, just come and enjoy what I do here, right? It's, it's for free. You don't have to, you don't have to um, pay to receive what you experience on that tier. If you would like to share some of your own personal value, then that's amazing, but you don't have to. And this is my first step in the direction of Uranus and Taurus, which is about energy exchange in a way, because I've always wanted to do this, it's just the timing has not been right. But now the timing is slowly with the support of this energy alignment, beginning to change the way that we psychologically understand scarcity, abundance, and energy exchange. So, this new moon is so much about aligning with your own emotional space, connecting with that, communicating that, cultivating that, while simultaneously dealing with what the energy feels like, which is just all over the place. Keeping grounded is an essential part of this energy. Unfortunately, over the last um, week, we've had uh, two events, and I'm actually, to be honest, I'm not even going to say that. The world we live in today and the life that we have led for ourselves, unfortunately, contains a tremendous amount of um, sadness and depression. 
And in the chart of the day we recently did, we talked about the, the Saturn archetype or the Capricorn archetype and Neptune and Scorpio correlating to uh, feelings of futility that ultimately through choice becomes the way that we disconnect. So notice how disconnect, disassociation is inviting you to see where there are soul fragmentations or disconnects basically that are not that are basically separating you from feeling your heart be more aligned with what is here for you to experience where is their duality where is the separation where is the unprocessed emotions existing you'll notice that with this energy and right now there's also a deep deep need to heal and align yourself with this process. So when I talk about healing, I'm meaning more along the lines of actively choosing to recognize that there are parts of your psyche or emotional development that need attention. And we all do it. We all need it, should I say. And so alignment is a process of becoming aligned with what is needed to resolve some of the different states of emotions that we carry within us. So this Saturn in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn, it's, it's revealing to us this need to heal some of the trapped emotions that we might carry and to, to communicate them. Mercury in Cancer, Sun and Moon in Gemini, right? Venus in Cancer is about across the node. Therapy is a very important part about, around healing the fragmented essences of ourselves, the disassociated essence of ourselves. Because the more that we can remove that uh, energetic band that keeps us in duality, the deeper our experience for connecting to our hearts becomes. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for letting me share this video with you today. And um, I'd like to let you know now as well that on the 20th, I'm not 100% sure now exactly because I know I did that. I think it's Saturday the 23rd. Saturday the 23rd, I am hosting a four, uh, series of four webinars. So it's going to last one week uh, for four weeks, uh, Evolutionary Astrology Basics. And we're going to be doing principles in evolutionary astrology in the soul. We're going to be learning about the 12 archetypes. We're going to be learning about Pluto and the nodes. And we're going to be doing chart examples in Q&A. So what I want you to know is that this is a series of webinars that I'll be hosting that you can join and um, I'll be will be teaching this basically and you'll have an opportunity to do Q&A with myself and we'll look at charts and I really want to you know give you the principles the basics of evolutionary astrology in this four series webinar so if that's something that you really like um, I'm going to the the whole entire four webinars is just a hundred bucks and um, you'll basically be able to walk away from this and feel like you can begin to look at an astrology chart and understand what type of consciousness you want to be in when applying evolutionary astrology to your own life and seeing how you can access the, the handprint of your soul, basically. So if that's something that you, that you find really, really interesting, it's a hundred bucks, it's for four weeks, and um, the way to sign up is by literally just clicking in the description below and um, the sign up will be there. Otherwise, um, if you want to write me an email, you're more than welcome to you as well if you want to do that. And uh, it's open to as many people as possible. So I'm really, really looking forward to actually doing this. I'm, like, I'm really excited. So if you feel like you want to take advantage of learning astrology in a way that's you know going to be very simple in the sense that it's not going to be complicated because it's not my foundation classes because that's more attuned to students, but this is a really great class to uh, to get into when it comes to, you know, not only understanding how I can read this chart, but also, you know, taking a chart of your friends and saying, oh, I can see how this could work over here. All right. So don't forget to, to sign up for that if that's something that's appealing to you. My friends, have a wonderful um, week and I hope to see you soon in the webinar series. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.